Now we're going to get into a little bit more on the meat and potatoes of these uh, these instruments that are used. So why did I say in the past that this is a counterfeit token of value? Well, again, I had mentioned earlier that in the, at least in the Canadian system under the Canadian Law Dictionary, when I went to look up uh, valuable token or token of value, because it has been uh, described in letter communication from the Office of the Registrar General uh, to various people who are inquiring about the birth certificate, uh, that it was described as a valuable token or a token of value. So when researching that word terminology, all I could find was counterfeit token of value. Well, we know in the world of money, if, you're, if your life is only worth, if you're becoming merchandise, you've feigned yourself, as we've done in other videos, with the assumption of joining your given name, your private name, with that legal last name, you're, you've made yourself a piece of merchandise and by consent, even though there was inducement involved in this, and I'm not saying there wasn't. There was active state damage done, okay? Uh, in the case of most people's statement of birth records, filling in the private with the public name. But the, uh, the key thing to remember on these, uh, on these counterfeit token of values is the reason why they're counterfeit, not only just because it's not really who you are, it's just something that you become in the legal world with title. You were never born a Canadian or an American or Australian or any of these uh, different nations. You, you, you couldn't have been because it just is make-believe. All those names are just made up. The only thing you had was the what came from God when he allowed Adam to name. Well, that's where the naming process came in. So your God-given name or your, uh, your given name is a given. It is a fact. And that's part of the reality of what parents would do with their children. Give them a name. So when we go and look at this, uh, this token of value, counterfeit token of value, it'll say certified extract. Now, at first glance, I only saw things of, or in the nature of first if it said certified extracts on it from the birth registration. Now, again, that comes from a registration document that you don't have. Okay, so it's not from the statement of birth record. It's not from the, the pending doctor's form. It's something that they put together, created an ownership or a certificate of origin, and then this is an extract from that, but they carry the original. You've just got an extract from that original. Okay? Now, it says certified extract. Now, you think right off the top that that would be the end of this. Well, that's certified. It means it's guaranteed in some way or made affirmed in some manner. But then you look at the New Brunswick version. They don't give a statement of birth record there. In fact, that's completely kryptonite in New Brunswick. You can't get the statement of birth record that's filled out at the hospital. They used to give a description letter of what was on the record, but they won't give you, for reasons they say for their policy, they will not do that. So they only issue, in the past, they issued a large size certificate, which you can't even get now. And the large size certificate just looks like the Ontario short form, but just it, it shows the parents' names in ambiguous form. So if your father was John Smith, your parent names would show on there. The father would show up as Smith, John. If the mother's name was Nancy Taylor, it would show up Taylor, Nancy as the, as the mother. Um, and then they would have the child's name. And of course, usually taking on the father's name, it would be whatever they name the child. So if the child's name was David and using the, the father's surname Smith, it would come out Smith, comma, David as the child's name. But that doesn't really, that just says name. It doesn't make any sense when you really look at it. So it's not clear. And that's what they do on the large size certificate on New Brunswick. And I wondered about that being the head office province for the SIN program because that's where the social insurance agency is. And so you look further on it, they have a little thing at the bottom of this large size certificate that's ambiguous and unclear on the names. And then it says, this is to certify that the foregoing is a true extract from the registration of birth. Hold on, hold on a second here. So now we're dealing with, this is supposedly a true extract, and this one just says certified extract. So that would tell me this is not even a true extract. But then I look at it, the difference between this document, this document has the Registrar General's signature on it, 
and not the deputy, just the Registrar General, and it has no seal. So it's not even a sealed document. Now, when you go to authenticate, so we'll take you to Ontario now. When you go to authenticate, they will only authenticate the statement of birth record and only authenticate the seal outside the frame. Nothing to do with the contents. You try to authenticate the little wallet size birth certificate and they'll tell you some story as if, the, oh, it's because it's so small we don't authenticate it. No, they don't authenticate it because the signature on this little small size certificate is not identical to the signature that's outside that. So if you ended up ordering a small wallet size certificate in Ontario, along with the statement of birth record, the long form, so you get the long and the short of this, you will find that the, the signature from the deputy, Registrar General at the time, is not the same. The signature that on this is different than the signature that's on this. Now we know in authentication offices, they have to have a signature that shows up on a screen. And these are pre-printed signatures that are scanned in advance to make sure that they know it is the signature of that minister. So when they authenticate, they're authenticating that that signature is correct. They won't touch this like kryptonite because this is a counterfeit. And because this is the one that you're carrying, not the one they have, they're not giving you the real extract. You're carrying around a make-believe counterfeit, even in the counterfeit world of the legal system. Now, in New Brunswick, where they only give you the large size, this document that says it's a true extract, they won't even put a seal on it, which means when you go to their authentication office, they won't authenticate even this large size that says it's a true extract, which is now completely confusing because now they won't authenticate that either. So they say, just make a photocopy of it, go before a notary, and then they'll authenticate the notary seal. I'm going, well, how does that make any sense? You're not authenticating this document because they won't put the seal on it because, again, this is ambiguous, and the wording on it is extremely important. So when we read the wording on this one, this says the state is the maintenancer or the one who maintains it. So it says right on this one under New Brunswick, this is to certify that the foregoing is a true extract from the registration of birth of the above named person maintained in the office of the Registrar General of Vital Statistics. So whoever is signing below a name on a document, if it's under seal, they'd be responsible for it. But because they don't want to be responsible for any of this, they don't put that under seal. Therefore, they won't authenticate the signature on that to say that they are the maintainers. But they are the maintainers, in reality, for what's on here. But unfortunately, because of all the consenting participants who were deceived on the legal journey of the satanic world and away from God under the prodigal son journey, they give this type of paperwork. And so when you look at it, all I could say is when you take and break down everything I've said here, all you can do is smell deceit in there because that's the world of the corruption of those who are in the Adamic sin nations. So this is how they operate. And so when you put your trust in that, well, then you're making a mistake. Now, the ones who basically are the trustees allow you to become an assumptive trustee because the minute you ask for one of these you're not the beneficiary you're acting in assumption that you're a trustee you asked for it and they give it to you and they say fine we'll let you walk around with it but you're just assumptive you really don't have any power you just think you are you're just making mere claim and mere claim to title is not title so if you just believe you're entitled it doesn't mean you're entitled you were never part of the legal contract in reality. You assume to be, and this is where most people have lost themselves on this journey. So I hope that this has cleared up a lot of points to show how this system is really operating and it should make you want to leave or escape or come out, not to be in. Remember, they do not register people, they register events because they could never register people because they don't have the authority to register people. 
Okay, so why would it say come out of her my people if God's people are not able to come out? And they have to have something they can come out with. So they must have a stake in there somewhere in this act of state cross the lines between truth and fiction, private and public. So I hope this has explained a lot and uh, we'll, we'll go further in the next videos.